Foi bem ali. Advance through adversity. I like to start out with a story. There was a man of faith, and he was a very strong man of faith. And at one point, there was some type of accident. It may have been a boating accident. He lost his whole family. He could have been very, very bitter. He could have said, God, why did you allow this to happen? But he wrote a song. And the song uh, had the theme was, Peace Like a River. The lyrics from that song are, When, um, when a peace like a river attends my soul, when sorrows like sea billows roll, you have taught me to say, um, when you've taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. Can we say that when we go through difficult times? God knows we're not made of stone. But God wants us to not become bitter and to love him like this man of God, this man of faith. Now, uh, this parasha uh, starts out uh, the first chapter of Exodus says, But the more the Egyptians oppressed them, the Israelites, the more they multiplied and expanded. God can use adversity to make us strong. God can use adversity to make us humble. Um, the beginning of history starts with the curse of Adam and Eve. The beginning of history. Then the Hebrews, the beginning of the name, the beginning of the Hebrews, the Israelites, they were in slavery for 400 years. And it is written that Israel has the strength of a wild ox. That could very well have been because of the 400 years of slavery that they went to. You know, there's an expression, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. There may be some truth to that. And King Hezekiah, in chapter 38, he had some health problems, severe health problems. And he said, um, I will remain humble all my years because of this anguish of my soul. He will remain humble. And then it also says that God humbled you, referring to Israel, that God humbled you to do you good, to test you, and to do you good in the end. There's also the wilderness experience. Have you ever been in the wilderness? When I was a young man, I had a very good friend. His name was Mitch. And we, some nights, it might have been Saturday nights, we would go out and we would walk. That's all we did on Saturday night, nights, some of them. And I, I kind of felt a little bit bitter. God, why are you allowing me just to go for walks on Saturday night? Isn't everybody else partying? 
and I started to feel a little bit sad, but I did my best to follow God, even though I partly didn't know what was going on. I thought I was following God. Why should this happen to me? And then I read Lamentations chapter 3, verse 27. And this is later on, after I had the feeling of being lonely and sad. Later on, I found out Lamentations chapter 3, verse 27, which says, It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. Let him sit alone in silence, wow. for the Lord hath laid it upon him. Yeah. Wow. Let him bury his face in the dust. And I saw that God was bringing me into the wilderness because he loved me. Yes. It can be a blessing yes. to be in the wilderness. Yes. Have you ever been in the wilderness? And Israel, after they left Egypt, they were in the wilderness for 40 years. And John the Immerser, whom Yeshua said was the greatest man that has ever risen, it says, before he appeared to Israel, he was in the desert. His life until he appeared to do his ministry. Yeah. And Yeshua. We know about Yeshua. And how the many of the Pharisees, not all, but many, were against him. The Romans against him. Severe adversity, and they put him to death. But death could not hold him down. Yeah. He rose from the dead. And what that means is adversity, God turns into a blessing if you are following Yeshua. And how about Jeremiah? It says in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, the beginning of the book of Jeremiah, it says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I appointed you to be a prophet to the nations. Amen. Jeremiah was one of the greatest of all the prophets. But... Uh, and uh, Hezekiah said again in Isaiah 38, he, uh, King Hezekiah said, surely it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. Mm. Amazing that God would call some of us, to, all of us to a degree, to difficulties and problems for our own benefit. Not being masochistic. I'm not saying we should look for adversity. But if God brings us our way that way, we can keep our faith and still follow him. Back to Jeremiah. Also, uh, Lamentations chapter 3, which uh, is often... Uh, considered that Jeremiah wrote Lamentations chapter 3. Again, after it may have been 20 years of following him, I saw Lamentations chapter 3. I encourage you, if you are having troubles, adversity, or even if you're having mild adversity, it says in Lamentations chapter 3 that Jer Jeremiah went through incredible adversity. I, it, it blew me away when I saw that, that the great prophet Jeremiah, that God put him through incredible adversity. I missed it for 20 or 30 years. And when I saw it, I realized that God can sanctify adversities yes. and troubles. 
Um, now I'd like to talk about tests, but I want to repeat, advance through adversity. Now I want to talk about tests. There's something called the squatter's law. The squatter's law is a law that if someone, not you, let's say you own the property, if someone comes into your house, and I don't know how long, for 20 or 30 days or 30 or 60 days, it's not much longer than that. If they come in and, and live in your house that long, you cannot kick them out unless you go to court. Three times, this is approximate, within a period of about a year or two, or I had three times completely different situations. Same situation, different person. There were three people at different times that asked to live with me. And, you know, I was, you know, to a degree, a nice guy. I could have been tempted to have them come into my apartment by the grace of God. It's, it's amazing. To me, it's amazing. But to the, by the grace of God, I did not let them to live in my house. My life could have been partly destroyed. My life could have been severely impacted if I let them live in my house. By the way, I, I let people live in my house. But I, I was able to pick them carefully. Um, I used to feel, back to tests, I used to feel when God was testing me, that maybe it was punishment. You know, like my walks with my friend, I thought maybe God was punishing me. But, after a long time, sometimes lessons take long, just as uh, Brian was talking about Isaiah. After a while, I was able to see that it was actually for my benefit. Yeah. But it took a long time. Yeah. Job said, he examines us every morning and tests us every minute. Wow. Yeah. And then I began to, to view it as God's love for me. As a good thing. I actually and I actually have begun to feel like it's an adventure. God's test. Now I'm not saying I always see it as God's test. Yeah. But much more, yeah. I see it as a blessing, as God's love. But there are some warnings here. Because if we fail some of them, you know, there's a little bit of grace. But just like I didn't allow those people to live in my house, you know, when we test us, we also have to be careful. Because if we're not, there can be serious consequences. Now, I want to tell a humorous uh, story. Uh, there was a rabbi who was having a disagreement with three other rabbis. And they're arguing and arguing. And, he, and the one rabbi says, oh God, please show me. And then all of a sudden, the clouds, there are clouds above, and the clouds split, and the, the light of the sun beams down. And the rabbi says, see, to the three rabbis, see, I am right. And then they're arguing, they're continuing to argue. And then, oh, and he says, it's just the wind. It's just the wind that took the, the clouds apart. And then, and the rabbis say, oh, the rabbis say, no, that's the wind. And then 
lightning strikes. And the rabbi says, oh, here's another sign. And the three rabbis say, no, it's just nature. And then they're arguing and finally the rabbi says, oh God, oh God, please show us that you, that the, it is from you, Lord God. And a, the voice comes from the heavens and says, yes, my son, yes, my son, you are right. And he says to the three other rabbis, see, I told you I was right. And then the three rabbis say, nah, it's still three against two. <laughs> Let's talk now about the mundane. Uh, I'm, when I say mundane, I mean tedious. Life can be tedious. Um, you know, as we talked about in the beginning of the scriptures, God says to Adam and Eve after they sin, you will eat by the sweat of your brow. Life can be difficult and tedious. Like doing dishes or cleaning the house or changing a tire. There's a story about a man that... Um, he had to change the tire. And he said, I'm going to enjoy this. He was trying to do that. He was trying to find meaning in that tedious act of changing the tire. Um, uh, our Shabbat liturgy, our Shabbat liturgy uh, has a degree of repetition to it. And I believe that God wants us to connect to him even through that repetition. So uh, the mundane can be, uh, God can help us to find meaning and connect with him through the mundane. Advance through adversity. I'd like to do a play on words right now. The word, in the word adversity, ad, verse, a T. When we add a verse of scripture, a verse, when we add a verse, it's like T, T to the soul. Ad, verse, a T. Let's look now at Job. There was a man from the land of Uts, whose name was Eah. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and turned away from evil. There was a time when the, the adversary came to God, and God allowed the adversary to test Job. He was the wealthiest man from the east. So one day, one day, uh, the adversary tests Job and all of his flocks and herds, and he had a huge amount, all of them were taken by marauders. All his servants, he probably had a tremendous amount of servants, all his servants were taken away or killed and his children. He had seven, seven uh, sons and three daughters. And they were having a party in the house, one of the houses. And the house collapsed yep. and they died. And then uh, Job said after this happened, the Lord gives the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And then again, God allows the adversaries to test Job again. And he is stricken with boils and sores over his whole body. 
And his wife says to him, uh, curse God and die. And Job said, you're speaking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? At some point he also says in the book of Job, though he slay me, yet shall I praise him. How about Zorba the Greek? Does anyone, does anyone see the play or the movie Zorba the Greek? Amazing story and play. What happens in the story is Zorba has terrible, terrible things that happen to him. Throughout his life, continues and continues to happen. And then, when he's at the end of his life, he, God allows him to have maybe the worst test of his all. And then Zorba goes into this dance, this defiant dance, uh, sort of saying, I will, I will not be bitter. I will not be torn down by this. And he may not have been a religious person, but he, I will keep my faith and not let this get me. Advance through adversity. It is written, a righteous person may have many troubles, but the Adonai delivers them out of them all. Are you going through troubles? God will deliver you out of them all. Are you having financial problems? Problems with your friends? Problems at work? Problems with finances? You, you may be going through many troubles, but the Lord deliver, will deliver you out of them all. It is also written, though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will again bring me up. You will increase my honor. And comfort me once again. Has God made you feel bitter? As I was tempted to be bitter back with my friend Mitch. Are, are we tempted to be bitter? God says that he will bring us up again. And he will increase our honor. And comfort us Amen. once again. Now... Adversity can be an opportunity to show love for God. Again, I'm not saying masochism. I'm not saying that we should ask for troubles. But if it does come our way, it says in 1 Corinthians 13 that love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Are we trying to be, practice love at all times and to show and even to return our difficulties to God in loving Him? Advance through adversity. Now, this may sound like bad news, but there is good news. Even though it started out with the curse of Adam and Eve, it says in Deuteronomy 23, 5, it says that God turned the curse into a blessing because he loved you. I believe that history is one of the greatest thing, themes of history 
is that God turns our curses into blessings. From the beginning, with Adam and Eve, God has been turning curses into blessings throughout history. And the Jewish holidays is one of the ways that God has rewarded us or helped us to make the pain less. Like Rosh Hashanah, the shofar, the shofar sounded about God is calling. God loves you. And the days of awe between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, that God is awesome. In Yom Kippur, God forgives us. In Sukkot, we are to rejoice, the great rejoicing. Hanukkah, the festival of lights. Purim, the triumph of the Israelites over the wicked of, like Haman, the evil man who wanted to destroy the Jews. Passover, when God delivered the Hebrews out of Egypt. And Shavuot, the giving of the Torah and the giving of the Holy Spirit um, and the Word of God. Amen. See, I believe that God has given us the holidays because, because of a, He wanted to make good the curse into a blessing. And Yeshua said, My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Yeshua also said, I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. Again, the good news. The good news is the good news. That Yeshua came. And because Yeshua came, it says that we the doorway to heaven is opened to us to those who follow him. And it says in Revelations, in heaven, there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man all that God has prepared for those who love him. Are you going through adversity? God will turn that curse into a blessing. And heaven will be a time of complete and total Amen. blessing. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.